Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Mark White, and it is my pleasure to chair this afternoon's session, which is entitled Meet the Tad Hack Developers. Um, it's quite a small crowd, but I'm assuming a lot of you would have been involved somehow in Tad Hack back in June. It seems like an awfully long time ago, um, but many of us were involved, even as far away in Melbourne, Australia, remember what a pretty big event it was worldwide. Um, and we've got, a, I think it's five or six developers this afternoon who are going to showcase the things they did in and around TADHack uh, 2015. And I think it's going to be awesome. And we've got a nice small crowd. We've got a, our first presenter is actually remote all the way from um, somewhere in Massachusetts. Um, I want to say yes. Cape Cod. Um, Cape Cod, yes. So, so that's the voice in the room. That's, that's Thomas, who's going to talk to you in a minute. Um, and without any further ado, the format this afternoon is going to be pretty obviously very informal. Um, we are going to have, uh, as I said, probably six presenters, roughly 10 minutes each. It's an 80-minute session, so there'll be heaps of time for Q&A and uh, any discussion. And or we can just hang out and have an early coffee break. So it's up to you. Um, we're going to kick off. And I want to welcome all the way from Cape Cod, Massachusetts, Thomas Howe. And I just have to bring up his Skype. And I'm just hey, going to try and, if I, if I maximize this window. Thomas, how are you up? How's that? Perfect. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. Uh, hi, guys. I'm very sorry that I wasn't able to make it there in person. I was looking forward to seeing a lot of you. Uh, so I'm sorry that I didn't. Um, so my name is, is Thomas. I am a communications developer. And I'm here to talk to you about um, my current project that we call Bot and Kissed. And um, so let's let's get to it. Uh, I started this project with a very simple idea, which was you walk into any business and you ask them to show you the phones. They'll show you something. But if you ask them to show you what happens when someone uses um, their thumbs to communicate with a business, if someone has sent them a message, um, generally businesses have nothing uh, that handles that. <clears throat> and so, um, what what I've been working on in particular are things called bots, and bots are things that connect people to processes or or to things or to programs uh, using messaging. And the whole point is so that you can do better things with your life instead of waiting on hold, um, and the employees can do better things in their lives uh, versus answer the phone. Um, if you haven't seen a bot before, it looks a lot like this. A bot is a automatic conversation which happens when you text into a phone number or a Twitter handle, etc. And the bot is the thing which sends you messages and then figures out your response. Um, and it's not a particularly new idea. We've been doing this for a very long time. Uh, and but this is beginning to be what we believe is the rise of this particular communications technology. Uh, and one of the things I want to just mention that, that we've been able to understand is uh, most bots that you see are not very smart. Uh, you'll, you're going to find a lot of people who will tell you that natural language and customer support things are the be all and end all of this technology. And the answer is it actually isn't. Um, <clears throat> and that's a good thing for us. Most bots stupid. Uh, we think that most companies have the need for between five and seven bots. And if you could imagine trying to train all of those artificial intelligence uh, engines, it's, it's impossible. Um, so all I want to tell, just want to put this idea in your mind about bots. See, not every, face, not every website is Facebook. Most websites are stupid and simple. Not every website is a monstrous thing. Same thing for bots. So... Um, uh, so exactly how does a bot work? Uh, so basically, uh, here's a, the life of a simple conversation. Somebody will text a, a word like homeroom into a phone number. Um, our bots connect to messaging networks using APIs. Uh, I have a lot of API uh, labels in here, just so you guys can take see exactly where and when uh, APIs are important. Um, once you've texted in, the bot has the conversation with you. And then when it's complete, it'll email that conversation to you yourself. It will also uh, do what's called a webhook, which is a post of the data to anywhere you want. Um, we use Zapier as, a, in, as an API bridge between um, our bots and 500 cloud services, including um, 
CRMs and, and Zendesk and uh, Google Docs and Salesforce and anything else you can imagine. So I will also so one way of thinking of, about a bot is a bot is a, like a new web form that when you have a uh, a web form and you press submit, basically the same thing happens when you have a conversation with a bot. After the after the conversation is over, we'll post that data. Uh, and what's kind of uh, fortunate for for the bot makers in the world is that mobile forms generally suck. It's difficult. Mobile input is one of the hardest user interface problems. However, people love using their thumbs and people love uh, texting. And so uh, people actually prefer thumbs for input. So when you're walking around town and you need to actually input stuff, sometimes bots are a better choice, just from user experience. Um, so we, uh, our contention is that there are three kinds of, of ways of getting directly into a company. The first, the first one we all know, which is web browsing. So when you're on the browser, if you're on the site, um, web websites are are what you'd be using. Uh, so if there's a browser involved, that's the place you'd be. Uh, as we began to un to become mobilized, we put we put applications on mobile phones to make a mobile experience, and that's the second way to interact directly with the company. The first is the desktop site. Mobile app, and if none of those two things are are appropriate, like I'm not on your site, I'm not in front of a browser, and I haven't installed your app, generally bots are a very good choice. It's the none of the above choice. It's the least functionality, but the greatest applicability. Remember, there's only three hours of every day that you're in front of a browser or on your mobile phone. So um, we imagine that there's going to be this thing like a web stack, which is how we express, you know, the how you put together a website, you have the internet, you've got a database, you have a web server and a website, and that's how you build a data-driven website. Uh, the bot stack is the same sort of thing. If you want a data-driven bot, you have the messaging network like Verizon, Facebook, Twitter, etc. On top of that is the same database because you need data. Um, and then on top of that is a bot server, just like a web server. A bot server serves bots, a web server serves web pages. And then on top of it, is the bot itself, and that's exactly what KIST is. KIST is a series of bots that's served out by a bot server. Okay, so KIST, as I said, is a, is a selection of automated conversation bots that have been pre-designed, so all that you have to do to, um, to get uh, your bot ready is to change the words to match what your business case happens to be. And that gives us the ability in KIST to um, have an offer that requires no applications to install, no geeks to configure it, and no hassle. So any businessman with an eighth grade education can pick a conversation of our standard ones, give it the words, and collect data from any network identifier. And what's really kind of cool is it works, on, works for anyone, anywhere, on any network. So any messaging network that we attach to, uh, your customers can text into, um, and they don't have to have any applications installed which makes some really difficult things not so difficult. Um, for instance, it used to be difficult to communicate, to coordinate a large amount of human beings, either for staffing or for, for um, coordination for election campaigns or emergency services. But with scheduling bots, it becomes very easy because it becomes a disaggregated function. Or it, became, it was difficult to support a product if you happened to be half a world away in 12 time zones and spoke a different language. But now with bots and bot servers, uh, uh, because they can translate human languages between English and Spanish seamlessly, it becomes very simple to s support your product, even if it's half a world away. Um, do you remember what it's like to be on hold? Uh, your kids won't, because what will happen is instead of calling a company, you'll text them first and say, please give me a call back. It's what you do with today with your friends, you should do it with your companies. And We've, for a long time, we've tried to figure out how to make um, small businesses mobilized. Well, bots do that very quickly, very efficiently, uh, and practically. So, um, uh, so just to, to, to sort of give you some compartmentalization here. So bot servers and web servers have the same functions. If you were to take a look at what they would do in their value propositions, basically the same value proposition, but with different content. So instead of serving HTML, bot servers manage sessions, conversations with a customer. But in both cases, at the end of the day, a chunk of data is sent to your software, 
either because if it's on a website, someone pressed submit, or the conversation is over with your bot. So um, uh, GreenBot is our bot server, and what does it do? It, it does um, a whole bunch of stuff like manage sessions, as I talked about, but it also maps, uh, maps bots to addresses so that when you communicate with a particular network identifier and a keyword, we'll run the right bot. It also hides the um, issues of connecting to different networks, so you can connect the same bot to WeChat and Line and Telegram and SMS and toll-free, doesn't matter. Um, this bot server is, is the thing where bots live. And so we would expect that over time, these bot stacks begin to look a lot like web stacks, so that we have, um, we have different sorts of, of uh, solution sets for um, either handling process automation with your communications with customers, or um, for handling large population surveys, or providing uh, outsourced cu customer contact services. And there's some really nice sort of uh, things that we didn't expect to see that we now see. For instance, um, if you're dealing with the Internet of Things, um, I challenge you to design a sensor to determine if you have a dirty bathroom or that there's a suspicious man walking around. That's a very difficult thing to design a sensor for. It's not going to cost a quarter. Except, of course, that your sensor has thumbs and a brain. Um, you're able to use human beings as sensors in Internet of Things implementations and ask them more complex questions, like, does my bathroom need service? If so, text us to tell us. Or if I'm doing biological surveys and I want to know how many birds are in this nest, this is a real use case, actually, uh, you can text you know, who's living in that nest uh, which is almost impossible to, to put together if you had to do it with a $10 sensor. So anyways, that's the um, project I've been working on. Um, if you'd like a copy of this presentation, and who wouldn't, uh, uh, what I'd like you to do is text the word Lisbon, L-I-S-B-O-N, to this uh, U.S. Uh, number, U.S. long code, 1-218-325-5075, and I put together a KIST bot, which is a simple lead generation bot, that will give you the link to this presentation so you can download it. And it'll also ask you if you want to talk to me later because you know, we're young, we're, we've just started out. We're looking for supporters, we're looking for commercial partners, uh, we're looking for support. So if you're interested, let me know. Thanks. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you. Give a round of applause. Hey, so we do have time for one or two very quick questions if anyone wants to ask a question of Thomas. Um, anyone? Yep. Question coming for you, Thomas. There he is. Hello. Um, I'm, I'm Portuguese, and you talked about English-speaking bots, I think. Uh, do you have uh, on your bot server any multi-language feature? That's yeah, we do. Use? OK. Could you yeah. explain it yes. more? Yeah, so, so what we have on our bot server is um, the ability to detect the language of the person texting in, and then switch the conversation in real time to that person's language, so that if you ship a product, and uh, if you're in, if you're in Germany and you build a product, and that product ends up in Brazil, and someone texts into that that uh, that number, what they will see is their conversation happen in Portuguese, but the customer is back in Germany will only see it in German. Um, and we and bot servers and our bot server supports uh, machine language translation. But we also um, have hooks for filters for doing human like like real time human language translation as well. No more Does questions. Thomas, yeah, thank you very way, much. Um, you're, you're you're very welcome. All right, we're going to hang up on Thomas. Uh, bye, Thomas. Uh,